Welcome back to the Victory Point Coalition. Today I will be looking at the game Gong Shong Clever, or That's Pretty Clever, and uh, just demonstrating how to play the game, and then we'll actually go ahead and play a solo, the solo version of this game as well. So let's get into the game. This game is, in effect, a roll and write game where you have these. Uh, six die in different colors that we roll on each round and those die uh, Reflect different areas on our score pad here depending on how many number of players are playing uh, It will determine how many rounds there are in a solo game like I'll be demonstrating today We'll be playing six rounds at the beginning of the first four rounds We will get a free action which I'll talk about a little bit later on so on your first round, you will roll all six die. And I've got this little tray here just to kind of maintain our dice. And looking at our results, we then determine which die we want to select, place on our pad, and then mark on the corresponding color. So let's take a look at each of the colors on our pad here. The yellow section is where we would cross out any of uh, our yellow dice results. So in this case I got a 1, so I could cross out this one here or this one down here. In the event that I'm able to achieve uh, crossing out a, an entire line, either horizontally, vertically, or in one case diagonally, I then gain that extra benefit. So uh, vertically I would gain the points down the bottom here. To the right I would gain these extra abilities, and we'll talk about those soon. The blue die, or the blue section, again, I would look, reference the blue die, and you'll notice here it's got the blue plus white die. So anytime you're crossing off any of the numbers in the, in the blue section, you are required to sum both the blue and the white die together. So in this case, I would actually have the opportunity to cross off the number four here. Uh, similarly to the yellow, I would then, uh, once I've managed to uh, cross off any of the lines vertically or horizontally, I would gain that benefit. At the end of the game, the victory points associated to the blue section corresponds to the number of boxes that I've crossed off. So if I'm able to cross off five boxes, I would gain 11 victory points. The green section works a little bit differently. The only requirement is, is that the number needs to be uh, uh, greater than or equal to the number in the white box. So in this case, I rolled a two, so I could, oh, so in this case, I could cross out the first uh, box there, giving me one victory point. The next time I'm looking to cross off the uh, the next green box, the number on the die would need to be greater than or equal to two, and so on and so forth. When you get to certain sections, you will you will unlock the additional benefits. Uh, orange section a little bit easier. So you're literally just taking the uh, the value on your orange dice and marking it in the yellow box. When you get to these times two sections, you would multiply the value of the die by two in these cases, or by three if you manage to get to the end of the, uh, the orange section. When you place a value in these uh, sections here, you will obviously unlock those abilities as well. And last but not least, our purple section here works in the same vein as our orange section where you're, you're putting in, plugging in numbers based on the value of your purple die. However, the number after the first needs to be larger. So if I was to put in this case, well, this is a good case because it's a six, but if in the case I was to put a one there, the next result would need to be larger than one. So it needs to be a two or a three or up to six, for example. When you do plug in a six on anywhere along this line, the next number then resets. So you would then be able to put a, a, a one to six again. Yeah, and then again, once you plug in numbers in any of these locations here, it will unlock some of these abilities. So let's look at some of these abilities here. The blue axis literally just means you're able to place an extra X in the blue section, which will hopefully trigger another opportunity or another chain to unlock another ability. The four orange or the five orange here enables you to put that value four or five in the orange section so helping you complete the the orange section here same with the green x allows you just to mark the next white box on the green line the plus one 
and this little uh, swirly re-roll symbol refers to this section up here. So the the re-roll action allows you to literally re-roll all the dice that you just rolled, hopefully improving your results. The plus one enables you to take an extra die action, and we'll talk about that shortly. The last symbol on our score sheet here is the fox symbol, and how that works is at the end of the game, we will actually tally up our results of each of the colors. This is the game I just played a couple of minutes ago. And the the least uh, point valued color then applies to each fox. So in this case, I uh, achieved only 11 points in the blue section, which was the least point value of all the colors. That means that my foxes, for each fox I had, I would gain 11 points. That's ultimately the game, guys. Uh, so I think the best way to learn is just to play the game. So I'm going to demonstrate how we do that now. Uh, the game is is played into two phases. If you're playing with more than one player, uh, you would be you initially be the active player in which you would choose your three die, marking them down, marking the points here. In the event, when you do select your die, any other dice in the pool that uh, has a value less than the number that you selected actually goes on this silver platter here. Uh, they're locked out of the game until your next turn, uh, when you're next active. Once you've placed your three die, it is then the other player's turn to have the ability to choose one of those die on the uh, on the silver platter to then add to their score sheet. So you're constantly part of the game. You're interested to see what will show up on the platter here that you will then be able to apply to your score sheet once the active player has uh, has completed their turn. In a solo game, the way it works is I would play as the active player, rolling like normal. I would then play as the passive player, and I would just roll the six die, take the three lowest uh, valued die, put them on the platter, and then select one of those there. Okay, let's give it a go, let's play. So first things first, as the active player, I will roll the six die. And I typically go for, or take a look at the lowest valued die uh, numbers first, only because if I select anything higher, if I was to select this three blue, for example, it will literally mean all of these, because all four of these die are less than the value of the three, it will mean they will all be locked out for the rest of this turn, which is not ideal. So first things first, we're going to cross off that we have started um, our, our uh, first round. And as a result, we get a reroll. So I'm just going to circle this to indicate that I have a reroll available. When I use that reroll, I would literally cross out that circle there. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's take a look. So we have a orange two, which is not ideal because we want high numbers in our orange section, uh, only because at the end of the game we accumulate or add up all of these numbers that are in the uh, the orange section. Same with the purple section. I failed to mention that earlier, we would just literally add up the numbers that we input into these white boxes. The one purple, same situation, not a great start for the purple. The Green 2 is is probably an ideal way to start, although it will mean that our purple die will be locked out. However, looking at our other options, so with the, the white can be placed in any section. I can apply that white die to the yellow, blue, green, orange, or purple section wherever I like. Bearing in mind, I can, I, if I am using the white die to uh, be applied in the blue section, I would always need to locate the blue die and add those two values together wherever the blue die is, if it's even on the silver platter or on the score sheet already. So if I, was, if I was to use the wild there, it would give us a five on the blue. I think I'm going to take the green and apply that down here. So I've got one point now in our green. Okay, because the purple is less than the two, that gets locked out for the rest of this turn. Let's roll whatever we have left. Hmm. Okay, so our one blue, adding it with the white die, will give us a five in the blue section, which isn't bad because we only need a five and a nine to get this additional re-roll here. 
Okay, uh, what else do we have? We have the yellow two, which could get us started in this section here. I think we'll stick with the blue because I don't want to lock out the blue for the next round. So let's take the blue. So there'll be a five on the blue section. Okay, nothing else gets locked out. Let's re-roll the remaining. So we have a wild two and a three yellow and a six orange. Six orange is a great way to start on the orange section. So let's go ahead and start orange with six. So that would then leave these numbers on the platter for the passive players to now select one of those and add it to their score sheet. Uh, because I'm playing the solo game, as the passive player I would just roll all six die and take the three lowest numbers. So we got the one white, the one purple, and the three blue. If there is a tie, you would take the the dice that was closest to the silver platter. Okay, so we got a three blue, which uh, combined with the white would give us a four, which isn't bad, but it's not ideal either. We have the white one, which we can't place in the green because the green needs to be equal to or greater than two. Um, the one purple is not exactly great either. I think we'll stick with the four blue just to get uh, started in our, well, better head start in our blue section. So we'll check that off there. Okay, and then we start off with round two. Round two gives us one additional uh, die action that we can use. And we'll roll all six. All right, our lowest number is a one in the yellow, which we may take a two in the green, which we could use, but it will mean that we'll lock out our one white. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and use the one, and I think I'll use it to gain victory points, so we'll, we'll apply it to this one here. The reason I like to do that is it be, it provides the ability to gain this three ways, gain victory points, a, a four orange, or gain us that plus one extra die roll via the diagonal. Okay, nothing gets else locked out, so let's continue on. Okay, we have a two orange and a three green. We could use the green, it will mean that our two orange will be locked out. The two orange is not really ideal, it's a pretty low number for our orange section. So, I think we'll lock it out for the time being and take the three green. Cross that out. So we'll lock out the orange and then roll our remaining three. Oh gosh, okay, not, not the best of rolls. Okay, so we have a three for the blue that we could apply, a one for the purple and a one that we can apply anywhere. Ay ay ay. Okay. I think we'll go with the blue, I think. So we'll take the blue, which will actually be the three with the white. So we're working towards this five orange, which would be really nice to add to our orange section. So those two die, we go to the passive players in a solo game. We just re-roll all six. Take the least three numbers, which are three twos, okay. So we have a two purple, we haven't started our purple section yet, so that might be ideal. We can't use the green because the next green number needs to be greater than or equal to three. We have a two wild. So, the two wild with the blue would give us seven, which we could start working on our section here. Uh, we could add the two to our line in our yellow section to get us that plus one. Hmm, what should I do, what should I do? I think I might use this two with the five to help work towards this plus six in the purple, which would give us a great start in the purple section. So let's go with that. So we'll cross out the seven there in hopes that we can achieve that. Okay, round three. We've got another re-roll. I haven't used any of our re-rolls yet. We should probably look at doing that fairly soon. Let's re-roll the six die. All right, these are great numbers. Okay, the last thing we have is a four. Let's take a look. So we have a four yellow, which won't help us too much at the moment. We 
We have a four purple, which would be a great way to start. Four blue, which would be an eight in the blue section, which would definitely help us getting a new yellow. Wow, plenty of options. Well, we could use the wild pretty much anywhere. We could use it in the green. I don't know if we want to lock or apply or you know hold out or use our white dye just yet. I think we're going to go with the let's go with the blue with the white so it'll give us an eight there okay let's re-roll all right these purple ones they're not great are they all right so we got a two year orange which isn't great either and then a three green which we could use but it will lock out the purple and the orange so you know what let's re-roll Oh my gosh, another purple one. <laughs> okay, so I think I, in this case, I could use the three, oh, here we go. I could use the three yellow in this section up here to, again, work towards this diagonal, as well as the horizontal and vertical. It will mean locking out the one purple. But you know what? I think I'm actually going to take the three green and apply it down here. That will get us three points, an additional three points there. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll lock out our one purple, but that's okay. We've still got our wild car uh, in there. Okay, a two yellow, which we're, again, we could use in the yellow section in multiple areas, which could help us with this uh, number here. The four orange, pretty solid number. And a six, a six uh, wild. With the blue, it would give us 10, which we could look at. Uh, if we apply the six to our green section, it will give us a plus one extra action, or we could use the six in our purple. You know what? Let's get the six, the purple going. The reason we want to make sure we have victory uh, points in each of the sections is, is because of these foxes. Remember, the foxes, uh, is de the points of our foxes is determined by our least valued section. So if you don't gain points in one section, you don't get any points in the event that you gain foxes. So let's apply that six in to our purple. It's a good way to start the purple there. Okay, passive player. Let's roll all six. All right, three threes. Wild, which is great. So we got the three green, which we can't use. Green now requires four or plus. We got the three yellow. I think we might use that. Or we got the three wild, which with the blue would be seven, which we've knocked off already. Uh, we could use the three in the orange or the purple, it won't give us much. So let's use the three in the yellow and we'll use it on the, I think the diagonal. Or I could use it here to get the 14 points actually. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, okay. Round four, round four is a little bit unique. We have the option to either apply an X in the yellow blue or green section, or apply a six in the orange or purple section. So let's take a look. If I apply an X in the yellow, I could get an instant 14 points. If I apply an a X in the blue, I could get a re-roll or another yellow. Ah, I'm seeing something here. If I apply the X in the green, it will give me a plus one extra die action, which I haven't demonstrated yet, but I will soon. A six in the orange or a six in the purple, which will be great in either case. Here's what we'll do. Let's use that X on the six here in the blue which will automatically give me an extra X in the yellow. If I apply it here, it will get us 14 victory points. Now that's pretty clever. That demonstrates a chain, how one effect can apply another effect, which can uh, you know, result in hopefully victory points for you. Okay, so let's roll all six. Okay, oh gosh, got some ones and twos. So the two yellow could apply it to the middle here. Ah, so we got the, the blue, which would give us a two, which would give us an actual five for our orange, which isn't a bad idea. Let's go ahead and do that. So applying the two there will give us a five in the orange, which is nice. Okay, nothing gets locked out, which is great. 
We have a three and a three. Three orange will give us a re-roll and a three purple will give us nothing. Let's go with the orange. Let's grab the re-roll. Okay, roll whatever we have left. One in the yellow might get us a lot. The four with the blue will get us five, which we've not which we've crossed off. We could apply the four in the yellow area as well. Hmm. So we could apply the four in the orange, which will get us eight points. Four in the purple. See if I use the four though, it's gonna knock out well it doesn't matter at this point because it's the last roll. Uh so let's apply the four to the green and then we get our plus one. Yeah. Okay, let's play the passive player. Oops, dropping dice. Okay, we got a two, a one, and a three. So the two yellow could continue our efforts to work on this diagonal. The three orange will actually get us six points, and we have that one, which with the blue would get us five, which we've crossed off already. So let's grab the. I really want a, a high number in this orange. Hmm, tricky. Let's take the two and see if we can, let's put it in this section here. Yeah, let's try that. All right, round five. Two rounds left with uh, going into round five with two re-rolls and two extra die actions, which I haven't yet demonstrated. So let's use those in a, in a couple of minutes. So we've got a, a 1, 5, which will give us 6, which we've crossed off, so we can't use that. The green 2, we can't use because it needs to be greater than 5. The 2 orange is not ideal because it only gives us 4 points. don't like any of those, so let's go with a reroll. Oh, yeah, 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 all these 1s. So we've got a 4 blue and a 1 orange, uh, green, which again we can't use. And I don't want to lock these die out. Even if I was to use, if I was to use the green, uh, the, sorry, the white three, it will lock out these these two die, which is not ideal at all. Hmm. You know what? Let's use our last reroll. I <laughs> couldn't have gone any better, hey? All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead. Hmm. What shall I do? What shall I do? If I use this two, it's going to lock out these three. So I have to use one of the ones. I could use, no, I can't use the blue. So let's just take this one. Yeah. As much as I really don't want to, and mark a one in the purple. It means we don't lock any die, uh, die out. My rollings are horrible. Okay, so we can't use the green. The one yellow we could use, which I think we might have to. The orange one, you get us four points. So let's use that there. Let's hope for some big re-rolls. Uh, so we got six for the blue. We got a, oh, here we go. Six, six orange is great. And a five in the, uh, sorry, six green is great. And a five in the orange is also very strong. So it'll give us 10 points in the orange. Could also use the five in our purple to get a re-roll. Let's do that. Yeah, let's use the five in the purple to get a re-roll. And now, with this extra die action, I can now select one of these die to use again. I can use these multiple times, but I can only select each die once. So let's grab that five orange and apply that has 10 points there. And we'll also let's also use the other one to grab the six for the green. So we can get an extra five points there as well. Yeah, that was well played. Okay, passive player. Oh, nice, okay. Oops, oops, oops. That was a three there. So we can't use the blue because I'll only get a six, which we've marked off. The two purple. can't use because it needs to be greater than five. Uh, I cannot use the re-rolls as a passive player, just heads up. So that three, I think we're going to apply. 
We could apply it in the yellow, which will help us towards getting a couple of actions there. You know what? Here's what we'll do. Use the three in the orange, which will get us an X. And now we can apply the X to here, which will get us the green, right? Which will now get us a blue. Where do we want to apply this now? We could apply it here and get another green. We could apply it here. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's apply it to the blue here. Get a six for the purple. Get another blue, which will go here. Get another green. And now we got a fox. Wow, look at that. That was a phenomenal chain. I haven't done anything that great in a long time. Fantastic. Okay. Great. All right, round six, last round. Going in with one reroll left. Let's see what we can do. Got a one orange. Not ideal. Two green. Can't use. Four yellow. Mm, not going to get us much. Let's reroll. Okay. So we have a. Let's see, we've got one orange again, two in the yellow. Hmm. Okay, let's take the two. Mark it up here. Hope we can get 10 points there. Okay. The, oh, the two ones come out. That's not good. Not good at all. Okay, one purple, which we could use to get a plus one. Let's do that, because then we can use our one extra action later. Right, last roll. A two green, which we can't use, and a four blue, which with the white will get us five, which we can't use. So, I guess we can't use either of these. Drats, though, that, that at least demonstrates the, uh, the ability that there may be times when you can't use either die. All right. Not a good way to end. However, we do still have this one extra die action that we can use. So I can look at these and then see if I want to reuse one. So I've got the one in the orange, which will get us another action here, but we won't be able to use, well, I could, I guess. So let's grab this one to put in the purple, which will get us a yellow. And then if we put the yellow and we'll apply that yellow here, which will get us a four in the orange, which will get us another plus one. So that was the one that I used. So I could apply the one now, the orange one, and get two points there. So I've got two ones and a three. One orange will get us another fox, another fox with the purple, or the three won't get as much up here. So let's go and apply the one to the fox here. We can get the extra fox. Okay, you may have noticed I've uh, had to switch cameras because my GoPro decided to die right towards the end of the game there. So let's go ahead and score my game now to see how I do. Just on the back of the uh, instruction sheet, uh, Stronghold Games does provide a, uh, a score reference guide. Uh, depending on what you score, they give you a, a level. I have historically achieved less than 140 points. Uh, maybe one game in the last little while have I managed to just squeak over the 140 to get in the not bad, you could do better section. So let's see how we go today. So in order to score, I'll rip off the sheet. And on the back here, we have the different colors. So in our yellow section, we scored just the 14 points. Let's put that in there. Our blue section, we scored, so it depends on how many boxes we checked off. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we scored 37 points there, which is a nice score. Green, we scored 28 points. 
Okay. Orange section, we just literally add up these numbers. So that's uh, 30, 33 points there for orange. Same with the purple, add up those points, which is 21 points there for purple. And then remembering our foxes, so we had, how many foxes did we get? We got one, two foxes are equal to the value of the points of our, of our, uh, well, the, 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 num the, the section that scored the less points. So 14, which will give us 28 points here. So adding those numbers up. All right, we managed to get 161. That's probably the best I've ever done. 161 gets us just into the, that was pretty good. I'm happy with that. Anyway, guys, that is Gonchon Clever. Highly recommend one of my uh, uh, favorite roll and write games by Stronghold Games. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Uh, please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel. You can also now follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Check that out. Uh, it's at Victory Point Coalition. And I will talk to you again soon. Thanks very much for watching.